Today is Wednesday, March the 2nd, 2022, and it's a great day to have a day here on the Spurs Up Show, the best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. On today's show, I break down a pair of wins last night as both baseball and basketball secure victories. First, guys, I'll talk South Carolina baseball's big 9-6 to six win over the Appalachian State Mountaineers in Charlotte, North Carolina last night. We'll talk my full takeaways. Also talk TSUS midweek MVP and what's next for Mark Kingston's squad as well. Also on the hardwood on senior night, Frank Martin's boys find a way to get it done by a final score of 73-69 to 69 over the Missouri Tigers. Guys, I'll give my full breakdown and takeaways from that. Also my biggest takeaway from last night, we'll hand out the Shooter Shoot Award and I'll talk what's next for the Court Cox as well. Guys, got a very fun and packed show for you here on this hump day. And of course, as always, it's brought to you by the Spurs Up Show Store. Guys, TSUS.store, the best Gamecocks merchandise on the internet. Be sure to stay tuned to all of our latest drops, including t-shirts, pullovers, long sleeves, hoodies, koozies, stickers, you name it. We got it. Everything you need. Again, guys, that is the best Gamecocks merchandise on the internet. The best merch you'll find anywhere. Again, that's TSUS.store. TSUS.store. The best Gamecocks merchandise on the internet. Let's get it. You hear that, folks? It's the sound of a rowdy rooster celebrating victories today as South Carolina wins both on the hardwood and on the diamond as well. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, happy Wednesday. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, your host, the Spurs Up Show as always. And right now, as yours truly speaks, we are in the studio burning that midnight oil as right now, folks, it is 1254 a.m. in the studio, obviously much later than we normally record. But when you hit the road, you go out of town and you got to get the show done. You do what you got to do, man. And I'm bringing the energy right before I go to sleep tonight. Very excited, though, guys, to talk with you all because you know if you're going to stay up this late, if you're going to do the podcast, if you're going to run with everything with the content. What better way to do it, man, than talking about a pair of victories? I'm so happy to be talking with you on this Victory Wednesday. It feels good to be good, and we've got a lot to discuss. Guys, first things first, a couple quick reminders. Tonight, we are live at Tin Roof, 6 to 8. We're live out there, 6 to 8. Our normal start time going to be a ton of fun. $3 drafts, $3 rumple, $3 fireball shots, great food, Great times. Again, folks, it is a blast each and every single Wednesday. Be sure to come on out to Tin Roof. That is in the Vista. Looking forward to seeing you there. Also, guys, do not forget our tailgate on Friday, or should I say our ale gate, as our friends over at Carolina Ale House sponsor the event. Again, 3 o'clock until first pitch. Yours truly is probably going to rock the Daily Crow from the tailgate lot that day as well. So, again, really, we'll be out there all day long with official start time with Carolina Ale House, 3 o'clock. Until first pitch, guys, it's going to be an absolute blast as we get ready for the rivalry series. The Gamecocks take on Clemson in the best rivalry in all of college baseball. But, guys, that's this weekend. Let's talk what happened last night as South Carolina took down the Appalachian State Mountaineers and the Diamond at Truist Field, by the way. They renamed it from BB&T Ballpark to Truist Field. But at Truist Field in beautiful uptown Charlotte, by a final score of nine to six, Gamecocks coming from behind, scoring five runs in the fifth inning, two in the seventh, one in the eighth. And of course, they had one earlier in the game in the fourth as well. But coming back down from a six to one deficit and finding a way to get the job done in the midweek. Guys, first things first, before we talk on the field, 
Okay, before we talk on the field, I want to give a quick shout out, man, to, you know, the beautiful thing about the Rowdy Roosters and really just fans of baseball in general. And I think this probably applies to every single school and every fan base, because obviously baseball does not have the draw, you could say, that certainly football, right? Football's king, but even a basketball, you know, I think we'd all agree probably that basketball is a bigger sport than baseball. Now, I would argue that I think baseball is is the crown jewel of South Carolina, and I think the, the fan support is immense. I think it really does rival basketball. But still, it's not quite as big. But the beautiful thing about baseball and South Carolina baseball, and again, I'm sure this applies to the schools, but I'm speaking on Carolina. What a, what, what What's so beautiful is that the Rowdy Roosters, the people that show up and support, while it may not be the greatest numbers, it's not 80,000, it's not 18,000, whatever. But, dude, they are so diehard. They are so passionate. They have so much fun. Again, the best hecklers in all of college baseball. And I was sitting there last night with a bunch of you, some of you who may be tuned in, but a bunch of you, rowdy roosters. And, dude, that was as much fun as I've had at a game heckling and just watching the Gamecocks and cheering on South Carolina that was as much fun as I've had in quite a while, dude. The, the people that were around me, some of you that I'd met before, some of you I'd never met in person, um, all the chirping we were doing at the third base coach and, and number three at third base and, and, and talking App State's hitting approach and, and their pitcher, number 21, 20, 29, who couldn't keep his shirt tucked in. Dude, we just had an absolute blast. Again, it was just so much fun, good, clean heckling, but uh, a really, really good time. And again, you know, normally the midweek games, I keep it pretty together. I, I, I don't get carried away. I keep my emotions in check. Because, you know, most of the time you're playing a small school. It's a game you should win. All that good stuff. Dude, I was as turnt for a midweek game as I've ever been. Like, I, I, was, I was surprised almost how rowdy I got. So, again, I think that's because of all the rowdy roosters that were around me. And, again, the energy was good. The vibes were phenomenal. It was a beautiful night for baseball in Charlotte. And again, especially – when you come back the way we did and you get the W, when you get the W, um, my goodness, what a game, what a win. And again, listen, guys, here, here's the thing, right? This team is going through some things right now. We all know that in regards to injuries. We all know what the reality is when you talk pitching staff and maybe you're going to be a little bit thin. But win anyway. As I talked a couple of days ago, win anyway. Just find a way to win. Hey, you give them a grand slam in the first inning, you fall down behind six to one win anyway just find a way to win a ball game bottom line i don't care how you have to do it because guess what winning nine to six 12 to 10 15 to 13 guess what that victory counts exactly the same as winning one to nothing or two to one three to two whatever so finding a way to win and this team did that guys so many clutch performances from so many different guys. I mean, you look at, of course, the usual suspects. Andrew Eister, two for four with four ribbies. Uh, Braylon Wimmer, I thought, had a really, really good night at the dish. Two for three. Also had a very key sack bunt in the game. Um, you know, you, you look, Vito, the freshman, had a big hit. Um, you know, Michael Braswell, of course, keeps doing his thing. Carson Horn, I thought, had some really, really good bats for you. And you were able to take advantage. Again, only eight knocks, but you did draw eight walks in the ball game. And uh, when you got guys on, you scored. You capitalized, and, and certainly, again, man, it was it was just the the bigger takeaway, man, is it, just the resiliency of this team. I, th that's that's the, some, something, guys. I, I'll tell you this: I don't know how good we're going to be the rest of the way out. I, I really don't. But I tell you what: I can live with a ball club that fights the way we do. I I, I can live with a ball club that it that is that's resilient, that uh, fights through adversity that rises to the occasion when the tough gets, you know, when, when things get going tough, the tough get going, that I can really, I can really support and get behind a ball club that fights the way we have fought in certain games. And you think the UNCG on opening weekend, you think the last night, and of course, you know, so many people on social media, which, dude, you know, I had some people chirping because late in the game, I said, you know, do all, do all the slap dicks that were ready to mail in the season after the first inning, are they, are they, are they still around? They go to sleep, whatever. Guys, <laughs> Number one, if, if you can't if you can't take some picking at, then get off Twitter. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. If you're some old, miserable fuck that can't take getting picked at on Twitter, then just get off. Just get off. It's not the app for you. But, yeah, bro, if you, if you overreact to a first inning, if you overreact to one inning and say, oh, it's over, guys, I'll never forget this. This is why I won't overreact. 
when I played at Newberry, okay, and I knew this before, but this is just such a great example I think of. When I played at Newberry, we played wing it, right, in a game. And we lit up their starter in the first inning. Score four runs off him. We're thinking to ourselves, we're going to cruise to a blowout. It's going to be an easy victory. Well, guess what happened? That guy settled in, pitched like seven strong innings, and Wingett ends up beating us five to four. Now, imagine if they hadn't mailed it in. Guys, you play 27 outs. You play nine full innings. So, Last night should probably be a good lesson to you all of why you don't mail it in after a single inning, especially in the first inning, right? This team continue to scratch, claw, chip away, you know, find different ways, whether it be a pass ball, whether it be a big-time knock, a big-time hit, whatever. You kept finding ways to get the job done. And again, guys, you know what? That they're, they're, Sometimes they're ugly. They're not all built the same. They're not all built equally. But you know what? In the midweek, when you're not throwing your top guys and, you know, you're playing on the road in Charlotte and you're, you're kind of playing a unique opponent, it's just all about finding a way to win. And the fact of the matter is you, you accomplished the mission. You accomplished your job. You found a way to get the job done. Again, it feels good to be good, and it feels good to get that victory, move to 7-1. and one. Um, You know, guys stepped up. Guys stepped up. And Mark Kingston talked about it after the game. And, you know, again, what we're going through right now with some injuries and, and, and what have you and guys struggling, you're going to have to have guys step up, man. Bottom line, if we want this season, if we want it to become anything of it, guys are going to have to step up. You know, I look at the pitching staff. I, I don't dislike C.J. Wines. I, I think C.J. Wines, when he's in the zone, has really good stuff. I, I think mechanically there's just something there that, you know, his, you know, and I don't want to get too technical with you all, but, you know, when he when he's at the balance point, his breaking point and the way his hands are breaking and, you know, sometimes they're lagging behind, sometimes they're getting out ahead. And that, that's why you see the inconsistencies in, uh, you know, him missing spots because there's just so many moving pieces. And it's so hard to get those things all timed up together. And when it does happen, it looks really, really good. I mean, his stuff is good. He's got velo. But the timing is just so hard to sync up. Everything's so hard to sync up and that's when you start seeing the ball spite in the dirt you see balls flying high or you see him grooving pitches right in the middle because he's just trying to throw a strike because he's falling behind in the count now after that man I, I thought your bullpen threw beautifully I, I thought really you know that was a game that you know early on in the game of course like I said CJ gives up that and I, I, I give credit by the way to CJ because he bounced back after, he bounced back after that first inning um gave up the grand slam but came out nicely in the second inning I know the third inning gave him a run but um, that's a game that early on could have easily gotten out of hand. And kudos to your relief, John Gilreath, Aiden Hunter, Parker Coyne, and Michael Braswell closing it out. Um, you know, did a phenomenal job, did a phenomenal job. And I thought John Gilreath, who guys, I'm going to go ahead and dive into it, the TSUS midweek MVP. I am going to give it to John Gilreath because I think John, our guy, Gilly Gilly, is actually the unsung hero of that game last night. Um, when you look at it again, when he came in the game, and the way things were going, they could have easily gotten out of hand. He gave you that steady hand. Like, I think John gave you an opportunity to get back in that game. Uh, two and two-thirds innings pitch, four hits, one run, one earned, one walk, and four strikeouts, only through 48 pitches. But again, guys, I, I thought he attacked the zone. I, I thought Gilly's stuff looked really, really good. Uh, was sitting high 80s. The changeup was plus. The breaking ball was solid enough to work. And, uh, you know, again, Gilly's not a guy that's going to overpower you. He has to pitch. He has to locate. He has to move the baseball, spin the baseball, if you will. But I thought he did a phenomenal job. And, again, he, he gave you exactly what you'd hope to see out of a veteran, out of a guy that should be a leader on this pitching staff. And, again, I almost wonder, you know, as you look ahead, I don't want to look too far ahead because we'll talk the Clemson series on tomorrow's show and, of course, as we go throughout the week. But – you know, if if Julian Bosnick and 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 James Hicks are both down, you know, John Gilreath did start at Clemson his freshman year. Is he maybe a guy that they look to and say, you know what, this dude's an old, older player. He's a veteran. He's someone we feel like we can lean on. Hey, we're comfortable handing him the baseball. So again, guys, my midweek MVP is John Gilreath. I, I thought he pitched beautifully. Again, I, I do want to give a shout out by the way to Aiden Hunter. Um, that true freshman has been phenomenal. I, I think he, he's shown a lot of moxie, a lot of character, a lot of poise. A guy who was literally playing high school baseball at this time last year. Um, Parker Coyne also threw well through one inning. Uh, had four strikeouts, by the way. Had four strikeouts in one inning. 
because of a pass ball and a strikeout where the guy reached. Uh, so great stuff from him. I thought the stuff looked really good from Parker. And then, of course, Michael Braswell just continues to do Michael Braswell things. He did give up a pair of hits, but uh, got the save, his second on the year. He strikes out two men. So this year, Michael Braswell has faced what? he Or he's recorded eight outs, and he has struck out. He has struck out seven of the eight outs he has recorded. So the numbers are there. Uh, Braswell, the moxie, man, some of the plays he made. Just a real full team effort. A full team effort against something you love to see. And we all talked, man, last night, because, of course, you look at what, what's next. The Clemson series this weekend, the best rivalry in all college baseball. Last night was just all about maintaining momentum and having something to feel good about and, and being able to go in a rivalry weekend, feeling like, okay, you know, we're, we're on a winning streak. We are, we are confident. We are ready. Um, we did some good things last night, so a lot to improve on. We did some good things last night that we can really look at and say, you know what, we can carry that into this weekend. So, again, a job well done. Game Cox get the double on the diamond, nine to six. And maybe get that, that Charlotte monkey off their back, at least temporarily, that, you know, people, like, hate going up there. I think we just played terribly there. And i tell you what, I had a blast, man. I, th- I thought CLT was incredible. I wish I, I, wish I could have spent more time there. Um, yeah, had an absolute blast. So, again, Game Cox do get the win on the diamond. Final scores, Alcona 9, Appalachian State 6. And now we turn our attention to Clemson Weekend, the best rivalry in all of college baseball. You know yours truly is on one. You know yours truly is ready. Guys, let's move to the hardwood before we get out of here. And I'm going to keep this brief because, honestly, guys, you know, I didn't watch the game. I kept up with it on my phone in regards to statistics. But I did not watch the game. South going to get in the win, 73-69, to much, much closer than I think any of us really expected um, so again, like I said, guys, you know, you look at statistics, South Carolina shooting, let's see the game cock shot, uh, 39% from the field. They shot 30% from three, 81% from free throw, How about 17 to 21 from the free throw. That's pretty solid for us. Um, six to 20 from three, but Mizzou shooting 40% from the field, 22% from three and 73% from free throw. So again, Mizzou gave you a battle. I mean, there's no question. Missouri gave you a battle much more than I expected. Uh, Javon Pickett going off of the Tigers for 23 points. Kobe Brown had 19. But you look at South Carolina, man, and, and on senior night, your veteran guys stepped up, man. James Reese with 13. Jermaine Kuznar with 17. You did have the diaper dandy, the freshman. Devin Carter with 17. Eric Stevenson with nine points as well. Keyshawn had nine points. Um, so, again, a lot of familiar faces that were contributing. And... You know, I, I'll tell you this, guys, just jumping into it. My, my biggest takeaway from last night, right? I always give a big takeaway. And like I said, I was at the baseball game. And, you know, it's, 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 I appreciate you all not judging and just really rocking with it because I, I think you guys know where my allegiances lie. You know, I'm, I'm a baseball guy. And when it came to, you know, if South Carolina would have beaten Alabama, would I have been at, at Colonial Life Arena last night? Absolutely. But it's like, you know what? Because of that, I really want to go to Charlotte. I really want to go to that game. I made the decision. But I will say this, and in a weird, twisted way, and I know some of you won't want to hear this because so many of us came into the season with tournament or bust expectations, and I'm not saying those expectations were or are wrong in year 10 of Frank Martin. But, guys, realistically, a team that I picked to go 6-12 and 12 in the SEC and win, like, 14 games – you lock in last night going 500 or better, most likely 500, but 500 or better in SEC play. I mean, guys, my biggest takeaway is this, that whether you love to hear it or hate to hear it, South Carolina, for what it's worth, give credit where credit's due, give credit to Frank Martin, give credit to that staff, because South Carolina overachieved this year. They did. They did, man. Going 500, In the SEC, which I think at this point you could actually argue is the best conference in all of college basketball, that's not something I expected. I mean, it's it's really, truly not, man. If you would have told me a couple weeks ago we'd finish 500 SEC play, I would have told you you were absolutely insane. I would have told you you were insane. So... My biggest takeaway from last night, man, again, just the fact you've, you've overachieved. And, um, you know, again, I, I don't know. Maybe – and we'll, we'll have a full discussion and reassessment of the program after the season. And, you know, it sounds like, hey, maybe you have locked in or you're really close to locking in your postseason fate, which is probably going to be the NIT. But still, going to a postseason, 
um, having postseason basketball of some kind to look forward to, to get ready for. I, I think that's something all Gamecock fans, we can at least appreciate because we haven't been to enough postseasons where we're, 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 we're turning our nose up at the NIT or, you know, not, not, not looking forward to those games. Um, but again, a great win on your home floor. You know, I, I thought for a team that suffered a really tough blow uh, at Alabama and most people said, oh, well, that's kind of it. The season's, I don't want to say over, but, you know, I think a lot of people just kind of checked out after that and fair, unfair, you know, just kind of said, okay, you lost to Bama, the run's over, what have you, let's turn to baseball. And, and this team could have done that as well. But, you know, we, we talked about it last night or talked about it yesterday, guys. This team would be resilient. They'd be tough. They're fighters. They will not quit. They're a Frank Martin coach team. And sure enough, you fought through adversity. And uh, I think maybe there was a little bit of a hangover after that Bama loss, but you know what? You found a way, a way to win. That's the bottom line. You found a way to win. And again, I think you look at it, you, you got to give everyone credit because South Carolina, for what it's worth, the roster turnover, the uncertainty around Frank, they overachieved. They overachieved this season. And does that speak to how just low the expectations are? Does it speak to how great Frank is? Hey, that's up for you to decide. But they did. South kind of overachieved this season. So kudos to all of those involved, guys. Let's move to the Shooter Shoot Award. Got to give it to Devin Carter. 17 points in the game, five for 10 from the field, one for four from three point, and six of seven from the free throw line. Guys, this kid is going to be really, really special. Devin Carter winning our Shooter Shoot Award for his performance against Mizzou. And then finally, what's next for Gamecocks basketball? South Carolina will travel to Auburn, of course, to take on the fifth ranked Auburn Tigers. This Saturday, March the 5th, tip-off at 1 o'clock. Of course, Gamecocks take on Clemson and baseball at 4. So, going to be a very, very packed day. Very fun. But, uh, yeah, the season, the regular season, I should say, finale will happen this Saturday. And, and of course, the SEC tournament next week in Tampa. Going to be a really, 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 really big week. But, um, yeah, Gamecocks taking on Auburn this weekend. We'll see what they can do. And, hey, maybe my, maybe my butt's not safe yet. Maybe my butt cheeks are not safe yet. Maybe we can still get that. We can still get that uh, Frank Martin tattoo, if you will, guys. But again, hey, it's 1.15 a.m. the studio. Yours truly going to get out of here, get some shut-eye. We'll have plenty to discuss in the Daily Crow and at 10 Roof as well. Be sure to come out to that. Again, don't forget about the tailgate. I want to see you out there. Also, guys, stay tuned for details on Saturday and some sort of tailgate. I don't think Carolina Ale House is going to be sponsoring anything Saturday, but yours truly will probably set up, go to Fan Fest, whatever. The Battle at Bull Street is always a really, really good time. So again, guys, Looking forward to that and appreciate you all, man. Like I said, those that I met in Charlotte and got to hang out and watch the ball game with. And again, man, just those that show love and support, man. It, it means the absolute world. I, I don't want you guys to think that I just say that. It is it is so cool. And it's also really cool to hang out with people and friends and all that that know of my life, but see it from a distance. And like we go out together and they, they think it's just so wild and so awesome. And they just almost can't fathom what's going on. But it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's just really cool, man, that you guys rock with the brand and the business and the content and everything we do to a level where you want to, you want to voice it and show that love, man, show that support. And that will never get old, man. Getting to meet great Gamecocks and, 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 and having people appreciate your work in that way, that, that will just never get old, man. It's such a blessing. I'm so fortunate to get to get to do what I do and, and wake up and pursue something that I love so much. I love so dearly. I'm so passionate about. Uh, so, again, thank you all, man, because without your, your love and support, like I said, it, it wouldn't be possible. Just wouldn't be possible. We wouldn't be where we are. We wouldn't be going where we're going. So, again, guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those things, when I'll tell you, that, that really drives you to get back home and do, do a podcast at 1 a.m. Because, like, you know what? People find value in it. There's people depending on me. I also, of course, love to do it, but – you know, when there's people depending on you and they find value and you're like, you know what, man, I want, I want to do it for those people. I want to do it for the people that rock with us and the fans and supporters of the show. And you guys just mean the world. You guys mean the world. It's, it's just always fun to hang out with you all and, and watch the yard cocks and watch South kind of athletics and, you know, drink cold beers and, and just do the damn thing, man. So again, Hey, appreciate you all tuning in guys. Like I said, um, would love to hear your thoughts on both the baseball and the basketball win. Come out to 10 Roof tonight, 6 to 8, $3 drafts, $3 rumple, $3 fireball. And again, guys, great food, great times. Wednesdays do tend to get a little weird. So, uh, hey, wear your, wear your drinking shoes. We're going to have us a good time. And again, guys, appreciate you all. Have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.